Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse was an unbelievable movie and introduced tons of new and interesting characters to expand the world of the film. Perhaps the best new addition was one of the two main antagonists, Miguel O'Hara. The moment Spider-Man 2099 showed up, I instantly fell in love with his entire character, his demeanor, his suit, his theme. <laughs> But wait, as much as that theme is a bop, it's not the entire reason why Spider-Man 2099 is an effective and well-crafted antagonist. There's more to him. So that's exactly what we're going to be analyzing today, why Miguel O'Hara is a perfect antagonist. As per usual, my analysis will be broken into three distinct categories, motives, buildup, and reciprocal nature. Real quick, before we get into the first category, I'd like to ask you all to consider subscribing if you like the content, and leave a like as it really helps this video get recommended more in the algorithm. This should also be a given, but just in case, there will be spoilers ahead, so if you have not watched the movie yet, beware. Okay, with all of that out of the way, let's begin. To start off the motives category, I have to make an important distinction. The difference between a villain and an antagonist. A villain is an outright evil opponent for the hero to overcome, whose motivations are almost always objectively wrong, and whose actions are undeniably bad to an excessive degree. Darth Sidious is a good example of a traditional villain. An antagonist, on the other hand, is not necessarily evil, but can be a morally grey opponent who goes against the hero. Their motivations can be somewhat understandable, and their wrongful actions are justified in their mind in order to achieve a positive goal. Thanos is an example of an antagonist with understandable motives driving his horrible actions. But characters like Iron Man in Captain America Civil War or Elsa in part of Mission Impossible Fallout also fall under the distinction of antagonist even though they're not really bad guys. They just have reasonable motivations to go against the protagonist. Any opposing force to the protagonist can technically be classified as some sort of antagonist, which means that a villain is an antagonist but an antagonist does not necessarily have to be a villain. Miguel, like the previous examples, is not really a villain like the spot, but is definitely still considered an antagonist since he's an opposing force for Miles in the second half of the film. Villain antagonists often have several key attributes but one of the most important ones is motivation for their actions. Oftentimes, what separates a villain from a sympathetic or understandable antagonist is their motives. Miguel O'Hara has reasonable motivations for his actions. He believes that if Miles saves his dad, he will break a canon event and potentially kill everyone in his universe. Even though his actions can be over the top or aggressive, he is acting out of good intentions. He even says in his introduction, that he doesn't like what he has to do, but he knows that he has to do it. Miguel is shown to be a humanistic, caring, empathetic individual who is forced to do bad things for the greater good. And his side of the argument for not saving Miles' dad has a ton of merit to it. Some audience members may even agree with Miguel in this situation. And when your antagonist's motives are so reasonable and justifiable that your audience legitimately questions whose side they should be on, then your film has an extremely compelling and sympathetic antagonist. Part of crafting an effective antagonist is making the audience understand how much of a real threat they are to the protagonist, and Across the Spider-Verse wastes no time in setting up Miguel as a powerful character. In the first action scene, he more than holds his own against the Vulture, and we get introduced to some of his powers and abilities. Later, when Gwen is telling Miles about the Spider-Verse team she's a part of, she mentions that it is led by Miguel, establishing a sense that he is the most powerful of the Spider-Men. Jessica and Gwen even seem to reserve some sort of respect that borders on fear of Miguel, which only adds to his menacing presence. Even the scene where Jessica takes Miles to see Miguel is full of tension, showing us unclear glimpses of him and playing ominous music as the group of Spider-Men slowly make their way closer to him. After having seen him only briefly in action and hearing the chatter surrounding his power and aggressiveness, during this slow approach to meet Miguel, 
The audience has time to build up Spider-Man 2099 in their head, anxiously waiting for him. The movie introduces its antagonist at the beginning, hints at his true power through dialogue, and then doesn't show the audience this antagonist for a substantial amount of time until late in the second act. By giving the audience the groundwork of Miguel's character, but not fully showing his true capabilities until much later in the film, Across the Spider-Verse doesn't pay off Miguel's hinted abilities right away, but rather allows the viewer to build him up as a significant threat because of the uncertainty and rumors surrounding him. And that kind of tension-inducing buildup to Miles' first encounter with Miguel is exactly the way that a movie should set up its main antagonist, allowing the audience to perceive them as a massive threat by drawing their own conclusions based off of context clues. You might be confused by what I exactly mean with this last category, so allow me to explain. One of the ways to effectively convey the growth of your main character and reinforce the themes of your film is to have your protagonist and antagonist face a similar problem, but have different reactions to it. In this way, the antagonist becomes sort of a reciprocal or opposite or contrast to the main character, which not only enhances their conflict, but it also shows the audience the path that the protagonist could have gone down had they had a different reaction to their life circumstances. As you could probably tell, Spider-Man 2099 is essentially the reciprocal to Miles in regards to their reactions when faced with the dangers of messing with canon events. Miguel and Miles are both faced with the same dilemma, and they each choose to respond to it differently. One of the roles of a good antagonist is to highlight the best attributes of a movie's protagonist, and Miguel does this magnificently in Across the Spider-Verse. They are both Spider-Man, but Miles is a more emotional, relational, optimistic Spider-Man who still cares about saving the one life, even if it means risking the lives of everyone else. Whereas Miguel is more of the logical, mature, realistic Spider-Man who has come to peace with choosing what he sees as the lesser of two evils. Miles believes that he can always do the right thing, and this attribute of his is emphasized by Miguel's belief that sometimes you have to do the wrong thing for the right reason. The way that Miguel brings out the rawest form of Miles' character and beliefs through their reciprocal nature and conflict is an attribute of a quality antagonist and just one of the many reasons why he works so well and across the Spider-Verse. Miguel O'Hara was one of the coolest and most compelling antagonists we've seen this year. And that was due to the amazing writers behind this movie. I know his theme is definitely the reason why he resonated with a lot of viewers, and as cool as that theme is, I hope I was able to provide you with some of the more intricate reasoning for why he was such a great, high-quality antagonist. If you enjoyed this character study, you'd probably enjoy some of my other ones on characters like The Wolf or Perito from Puss in Boots, so you can check those out and my character studies playlist on my channel. Also, if you did enjoy this video, then please consider subscribing because I plan on making more Spider-Verse videos in the future and you'd be helping me reach my goal of getting 10,000 subs by the end of the year. Anyways, don't forget to leave a like and comment and I'll catch you all on the next one. Have a great day.